So number nine then from paper one, the multiple choice part of the 2015 old hire. It says, find the minimum value of this in the interval x is between zero and pi. Well, sine can only go up and down one. So the lowest it can get to is negative one. So the minimum is going to be negative three plus five, which is two. And that will happen when the sine equals negative one. When does a sine get to negative one? It gets there at three quarters of the way long, three pi upon two. That means that angle should be three pi upon two. It's a double angle, so take the two across and divide, and you've got three pi upon four. So it should be, I'm looking for a two and a three pi upon four. Two, three pi upon four is B. Number 10, another wee trick one straight after last. Solve this little equation. Well, you just flip the side. So two cos x will be negative one. So cos x will be negative a half. And then there's that same triangle again. So it's the one, two, root three. That's the 60, that's the 30. I know it's radians, but I'll change that afterwards. So two parts. Cosine is a half. Cosine is adjacent. That's when the angle is 60. But it's negative, all sine, tan, cos. So the cosine's negative either when it's here or when it's here. So I've got two choices. This says it has to be beyond pi, beyond 180. So I want the one in this third quadrant. So I'm looking for the angle which will be 180 plus 60. So you can either do it in degrees and say 180 plus 60. So you've got 240. Then change it to radians by writing over 180 times pi. They both divide by 6, that's going to be 4 upon 3. Or you could start off by saying pi plus, and that's pi upon 3. So that's 3 upon 3 and 1 upon 3, so either way, 4 upon 3 pi. 4 upon 3 pi is D. Number 11. The curve y equals f of x is such that this is its derivative. So what's the actual equation? Well, if that's the derivative, to get back again, I'll have to undo the differentiation, so I'll be integrated. So instead of taking one of the power, integrating, add one onto the power, and then divide by that. Luckily, four divided by two is a nice two. And one would have gone back up to the x term, but don't forget there might have been some constant. So this says, what would have been the equation of it? Well, that would be the y. So the y is nine, and Putting a 2 into this, you've got 2 times 2 squared minus the 2 plus c, so I can work out what c is. So I've got 2 squared is 4, times 2 is 8, but take away 2 is 6. So c will be the 9, take away that 6, c should be 3, so I should have 2x squared minus x plus 3, if it's there. 2x squared minus x plus 3 is c. Now what's 12? Given that R is this point, and to move from R to S, you would do follow these moves, this displacement. And RT, that is going from R to T, is three times going from R to S. It just says, what's the coordinates of T? So in other words, you don't really care what S is, because you just want to go straight from R to T. So what is RT? It's three times this one. It's three times oops, two, one, negative three. Three times RS. So that's going to be three twos are six, three ones are three, three negative threes are negative nine. So that's the move that takes you from R to T. So if that's R, I'll just put it down this way, position vector way, then to get to T, you have to follow this move, going from R to T. So following that move, I've got nine, two, negative seven. Written sideways, 9, 2, negative 7. Where's that? 9, 2, negative 7 is C.